Hey everybody out there in the YO universe, this is Survivor 2002 coming at you again from the Secret Lair in Virginia. After doing a little research online, I found out that next week's theme is Songs of the Cinema. <laughs> I'm excited about that because that's right up my alley. I mean, movies are my thing. So Songs of the Cinema, definitely a theme I can get with. The musical guests next week are going to be Miley Cyrus, I'm going to try not to grip my teeth as I say that, and Jay Hud, otherwise known as Jennifer Hudson, which we've been dying to see what she'd do when she finally made her homecoming appearance on American Idol. So can't wait to see how that's going to turn out, especially with Simon in attendance. Um, this, this should be priceless television. The guest mentor, because it is Songs of the Cinema, is going to be Quentin Tarantino, and that should make things pretty interesting, especially for the top seven. And I can't wait to see what songs they're going to pick out or what songs he might sort of steer them towards. Because as you know, you know, watching his movies Kill Bill, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, he has very eclectic soundtracks. Good, man, good pick for a mentor, even though he's not what you would call a musical artist. He has a very keen sense of music, especially the way it fits into movies, so. As usual, I did my unscientific research and paired some singers up with some songs that I hope that they would think about doing next if they can get the clearance for them and if they're so inclined to go that way. So, let's get into the list. For Danny Gokey, Danny is in real serious need of an image makeover. I mean, the, the whole thing of being Christian and stuff is wonderful and he's such a nice guy and puts out this aura of positivity. Some people are not buying it, especially since he's keeping this whole thing on like an even keel, which I guess for him is okay, but you do need to shake up that image every so often. Look at Adam. Adam has wowed us every week and people are really tuning in to see what he's going to be doing. And Danny, I think, needs to get himself a piece of that. So the song I picked out for him was the main theme from the 1980s classic, The Lost Boys, called Cry Little Sister, originally written and performed by Gerard McMahon. Now, anybody who's heard this knows it's a goth classic. It's one of the creepiest but most listenable songs I've ever heard from a horror film, especially a vampire-themed film. And it's a theme that definitely sticks with you. So um, I think that if he were to pick this one and to pick out an appropriate uh, outfit to, to perform it, people wouldn't know what to do with themselves to be like, that's Danny performing? Wow. Not to mention that the song is dead on for his vocal range and it's not too high, it's not too low. And to see him you know, perform and put a little bit of the, the sinister tip into it, I think would really knock the judges on their butts. Chris, he's got the clean cut looks, he's got the guitar moves down. There is only one song for Chris, as far as I'm concerned, that would be perfect, and that's Kenny Loggins' Footloose. You want to make the girls squeal, get the people on their feet, and really get the judges on your side. Footloose would definitely get you more than enough votes to stay in for the next week, if not the next couple of weeks. Lil really needs some help in terms of redemption because that Tina Turner mess was uh, the snafu of the season and we're still not done yet, so things could get worse and I hope they don't. But Lil needs to pick something that will make her memorable, that people can still kind of identify with, and that will minimize her risk of imitating anybody to the point of getting booted out of the competition. So for her, I selected Dionne Warwick's classic theme from Valley of the Dolls. Yes, it's got a high cheese factor. It's got a high WTF factor. There's a lot of people who were born way after that movie came out were gonna be going, what song is this? But people in my age range who remember that song and can identify with that and with the movie are going to really vote for you in droves, Lil, if you could pick that one. Anoop. Anoop needs a ballad. 
he needs something that's recognizable, not too old, and not so current that it might be too young a song for him. Something that's really going to appeal to his fan base. Got one song for you, Newt. Peter Gabriel's In Your Eyes, which everybody knows comes from the romantic comedy Say Anything from the 80s. Right up your alley. I mean, it's so perfect, it hurts. Will he pick that song? I would venture a guess right now, and I guess it's safe to say the answer to that is no. <laughs> but if he picks something similar to that, I don't think he can lose in terms of staying in. Allison, listening to your voice, I can only think of one thing, and this has been done on the show before, but you could really nail this one. Bonnie Tyler's Holding Out for a Hero from the Footloose soundtrack. Crowd pleaser. You could be phenomenal with that. I really don't have anything else to say. Matt. Difficult to know what he would pick that would avoid the cheese factor, that would help him keep his personality intact, and would bring something a little more to um, his performance than we've seen with all the Justin timberlake -y stuff. So for him, I suggested Everybody's Talking from the soundtrack to Midnight Cowboy by Harry Nilsson. He could put a spin on that that I think would really be phenomenal because he seems to be pretty good at doing the arrangements. So giving it a little more of a contemporary feel, I think it could work great for him. Last but not least, R. Adam. Who could do anything he damn well pleases and just be good? I mean, I don't want to say that he's already won this thing, but he could do the Barney theme right now and still get standing ovations, but here's hoping he doesn't go that way. Um, for Adam, I picked out Aerosmith's Don't Want to Miss a Thing from the soundtrack to the movie Armageddon. I know we've heard this song a billion, trillion, gazillion times before, but he has a way of taking a song, remember, play that funky music, that has a really high Velveeta factor and doing something with it that you just don't expect. And Don't Wanna Miss a Thing has been done at every freaking karaoke bar and dive and hole in the wall, but I somehow think that Adam will take that song and do something miraculous to it that will make it fresh, make it more accessible, make it more, make it almost like it's brand new. I just have that much confidence in him, so I think Don't Want to Miss a Thing would really help him out there. Not that he needs the help. And that's it for our top seven as far as the fantasy song camp goes. I am really looking forward to this week. And I know y'all are too, and as far as who's going this week, there is no telling. For those of you that celebrate Easter, have a happy one. And for those of you that don't, have a great weekend, and I will talk to y'all soon. Take care.